periods and things like that. I don't like it, but you know, you've got to have it, and it's just, every, every girl has to get it eventually, so it's to just put up with it. I guess it'll be kind of annoying, basically. <laughs> because yeah. my friends have it and, you know, they have to take all this stuff to school and keep on going to the toilet all the time. I had stomach aches before or I had temper. Because some people, they say have they, you have temper when you're period, but I guess I might have a temper. I filled out in places, really, not much. My hips become rounder and <laughs> there's other things. <laughs> Growing up is an adventure. We all go through it, and we all feel that we're the only one to have all the confusion and excitement. But you're not alone. It's exactly the same for your friends. Changing from a child into a young woman. It's the moment when you gain your independence, and with it, some of the responsibilities of being a young adult. And along with the different emotions go the physical changes, becoming stronger and more developed. Everything happens very quickly. Emotionally, you're on a seesaw, either up in the air or down in the dumps. But it's not just you, and it's quite normal. It's all part of puberty. My sons that are about the same size as me, but I'm probably the shortest by a little bit. Like you've got big tits, you've got big tits. Other people say, they're not so big, you know, they're really quite small. And some, some people just slimmer and everything, and sometimes I'm just worried about the way I look. Girls usually start puberty between 9 and 13. Some people start early, some a little later. It's different for everyone. The changes that happen during puberty take several years, and there's no set time for how long it takes. There's a lot going on inside and out. Puberty begins when a gland just beneath your brain, called the pituitary gland, sends a signal to your ovaries to start producing a chemical, a hormone called oestrogen. Oestrogen is responsible for many of the changes that are taking place during puberty. I don't like boobs. I don't want them. I had some discharge and I was okay there. Girls usually begin to develop earlier than boys. They go through what's called a growth spurt, shooting up several centimetres in a year or less. As you grow in height, so you begin to develop in other ways. Your breasts become larger and you may need to wear a bra. Just as your breasts start growing, you'll notice that hair will appear around your pubic area. Hair will also grow under your arms and on your legs. You'll develop a waist and your hips will become wider. You may notice a sticky whitish fluid in your pants. This is natural moisture from the vagina called vaginal discharge. This may also have a slight odour. A clear whitish discharge is quite normal. It's a sign that very soon you will experience that really big change, menstruation. I come home and I went to the toilet and then I, then I saw it and I took, my mum said, oh, don't worry, and I was crying. And I just quickly had a bath because it felt... Didn't like it. With everything that I heard, I thought it'd be hell, but then some people say, you don't even notice, you don't even notice. And I was, I don't know, I just thought that it'd be worse than it is, and it isn't really that bad. Menstruation, or the monthly period, is quite normal for any mature young woman. It's nothing to be shy or embarrassed about. Once you menstruate, your body is physically prepared to bear children. But that doesn't mean that you're ready to cope with parenthood in any other way, because the other changes that take place during puberty relate to your emotional growth. Gradually, as you mature physically and mentally, all the growing pains become worthwhile. These are the female reproductive organs, the ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus and vagina. They're located in the pelvic area or lower abdominal area of your body. Here's how the menstrual cycle works. Each one of your two ovaries contains many tiny egg cells. Every month, one egg cell is released into one of your two fallopian tubes or oviducts. This process is called ovulation. If that egg cell is fertilized by a male sperm, you will become pregnant and the fertilized egg will develop into a baby. Every month, a woman's body prepares itself for an egg which may be fertilized. 
Inside the uterus, a soft, spongy layer of tissue develops, called an endometrium. If a fertilized egg enters the uterus, it attaches itself to the endometrium, which nourishes it as it grows into a baby. Most of the time, the egg isn't fertilized, so there's no need for the endometrium, which starts to dissolve into a reddish fluid. This fluid then slowly flows out of the uterus, through the vagina, and out of your body. This is menstruation, your monthly period. Usually the period occurs every 28 days, but for some girls it might be as little as every 22, or as much as every 42 days. Just because your cycle isn't the same as someone else's doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. It often takes a couple of years for your body to settle into a regular monthly cycle. Each period lasts anything between three and seven days. It feels like a slow trickle, and it's usually heavier to begin with and eases off during the week. Don't worry, though. Life can go on as normal. During each period, you will menstruate only about half a cupful of fluid. I thought it'd be like, you know, all pouring out of you all the time. But then when I got it, it was differently, like, you know, I'd, you get it monthly and I didn't know that. I thought you'd have it all the time. Yeah, because I know it, it's going to happen soon, and so I'm just kind of waiting for it to happen. I guess I thought it was more painful, because some people have cramps, you see, but I don't usually have cramps. Often you will start to menstruate around the same time as you notice that your body is changing in other ways. Your breasts are becoming fuller, and pubic hair has started to grow. But if you start your period before your friends, or after them, it's nothing to worry about. Everyone's different. For most girls, menstruating is relatively easy. It may feel a little damp between your legs, and you may have some discomfort or period pains. There are several ways that you can relieve these cramps. Moderate exercise, putting a hot water bottle on your abdomen, taking a warm bath, or deep breathing. Sometimes pain relievers can help, but make sure you check with an adult first, your mum, the school nurse, or even your doctor. I had to go to the office to get a pad, and I was like, could I have one of those things? And I was like, what? And I was like, you know, <laughs> a pad? <laughs> and she was like, sure, fine. And I was, she, didn't, she didn't really react the way I expected her to react. I just go to the toilet and put one on, and then I just have to keep changing every break. Or was it a leak through? My mother told me about it. I mean, she was like always asking before I had it. She was always asking if I had it before. But um, I, so she actually prepared me for it. Sanitary towels are used to absorb the menstrual flow. To use, you just remove the adhesive backing from the towel and fix it to your pants. And if you're using a towel with wings, you then peel off the adhesive strips on the wings and wrap them around the sides of your pants. Some towels come wrapped in disposable pouches. Just wrap the used towel in the pouch. Don't flush it. There's a risk that it could end up in rivers or on beaches. Instead, help the environment by popping it in a waste bin. There are lots of different towels and pant liners to meet your different needs. Super longer length ones for the heavier days when you may need to change the towel every two to four hours and shorter towels for lighter flow days when you won't need to change so often. Always ultra towels are ideal for girls your age. They're so thin they won't show through your clothes, but they give you all the protection you ever need. Ultra plus towels have wings which give you extra protection by wrapping around the sides of your pants. Always towels and pant liners have dry weave, a top sheet which funnels moisture inside the towel away from your body to help you feel clean and dry. Unlike a towel, a tampon is worn internally. It's a cylinder of absorbent material you place inside your vagina to absorb the menstrual flow. If using tampons, read the usage instructions on the pack to make sure you're not exceeding the maximum wearing time, usually four to six hours. I, uh, I choose different clothes, just in case, because I don't like anyone to know, especially the boys. I was in my maths class and it leaked on the chair and I thought I was crying because it really upset me. And I just quickly had to go to the toilet. I wanted to go home but, you know, I couldn't really because my mum was at work so I just had to put up with it. No one knows when you're menstruating, not unless you tell them. Certainly no one knows you're wearing a towel. 
And if you do get a stain on your clothes, don't worry about it. You won't be the first or last person to have it happen. If you haven't had your first period yet, but you're growing up in other ways, it really doesn't matter. You'll have your period sooner or later. You're not alone. Everyone goes through puberty. It's a time when your body and emotions are changing every day. Don't worry about it, and don't be afraid to ask questions. Talk to your mother or father, sister or school nurse or doctor. There's a booklet which goes with this video too, so you can read about what you've seen in your own time. I used to bath quite regularly before because, you know, my parents made me. But now I'm finding I have to have a bath, like, in the, at night and have a shower in the morning, maybe occasionally have a shower when I get in, just to make sure that I'm nice and clean. I seem to wash more, um, take care of my skin and everything. I seem to take more notice of my body than I used to before and use a lot more deodorant and everything. That was quite long ago when I stopped thinking like that, when I stopped thinking, ugh, girls. This is the time when everything is changing. How you look, how you feel, and how you see yourself. It helps to start taking more care of your body now. Some of the boys, they're all right. They don't really think they're stupid or anything, but they used to act a bit immature, but they're all right once you get to know them anyway. If I like them, I sometimes ask them out and stuff. As you grow older and become an adult, you find that some of your glands go into overdrive, especially the glands under your arms and in the genital area. You may find that you sweat more than you used to. When perspiration comes into contact with the bacteria on your skin, it can cause body odour. It's not a problem. You just need to wash more often and more thoroughly. Take a bath or shower frequently and after sports or dancing. Then maybe put on a deodorant and clean clothes. The glands which produce oil in your skin, the sebaceous glands, are also more active. They produce a substance called sebum, which can sometimes block the pores of your skin, combine with bacteria and cause spots. Unfortunately, spots or pimples can be a fact of life during puberty, but you can help to prevent them by keeping your skin clean. Wash your face gently at least twice a day with a mild soap. This helps get rid of excess oil and dirt. If the problem persists, then you can use a lotion, pad or cream that is specially designed to fight spots. If that doesn't work, then you should go and see your doctor for additional help. The sebaceous glands are working overtime on your scalp too. Your hair can look lank and stringy and you may need to wash it more often. And whatever your age, clean teeth and gums are essential for fresh breath and healthy teeth. So don't forget to clean your teeth regularly, especially if you wear a brace. Oh, I've got taller, a bit fatter, spottier and uglier. That's all I can say. With all the changes going on in your body during puberty, it's more important than ever to eat a well-balanced diet. You should eat a variety of foods. A mixture of fish, meat or pulses for protein-rich food, bread, pasta and cereals for carbohydrates to provide energy, dairy products for essential fats and calcium, and plenty of fresh fruit and vegetables, all providing your body with the vitamins and minerals it needs. You're building a strong, healthy body for the rest of your life, and plenty of fresh air and exercise will help you build your bones and strengthen your heart and lungs. Exercise can be anything you like, from team games to running, cycling, skateboarding, or going for long walks. Whatever you do, it'll help you look and feel as good as you possibly can, giving you stamina and suppleness. If you enjoy watching television, it's okay, but make sure that you do other things as well. A lot of grown-ups say to you, 
well, if you want me to treat you like a grown-up, act like a grown-up, but then sometimes they don't treat you like a grown-up. As you become older, you'll be allowed to do more things on your own or with your friends. But as you're allowed to do more, you'll also be expected to be more responsible for yourself and your actions. You'll find that adults will take you more seriously, and your own friends will become more important to you. You'll also start to look at members of the opposite sex in a different way. Looking and feeling great means having more confidence and feeling better about yourself. And that alters how you relate to your family and friends. It helps you to really get involved and make a positive contribution. Now is the time when you begin to realize just how much you can do with your life. Don't forget that there is a booklet that goes with this video that tells you more about how to take good care of yourself during this important and exciting time of your life. They say I'm short and I, I, I'm not good at this, I'm not good at that. But I don't mind. I reckon that when I'm late, later, when I'm 15 or 16, I just grow a bit faster. My dad wants me to do really well, but my mum just wants me to be happy more than anything. You wake up and uh, you've had a little accident in the morning. Like, you don't get any fun out of the dream. Like, you just wake up, so you get all the horrible bits. Just now, life can seem a bit confusing. It's all part of puberty. It's a time when you change from a boy into a young man. You grow both mentally and physically, and start to grow stronger and become more developed. You start developing a little later than girls, and that's why you might find that they can suddenly seem to tower over you in class. Don't worry, you'll catch up. Some boys start puberty earlier than others, but it doesn't make them better or worse than you, just a little bit different. Puberty can be a confusing time emotionally. You find that you have great mood swings for no apparent reason. And then physically, your body is preparing itself for adult life. For most boys, puberty will start somewhere between the age of 10 and 14. Some people start a little younger, others a little later, but it makes no difference. Puberty begins when a gland just beneath your brain, called the pituitary gland, sends a signal to your testicles to start producing a chemical, a hormone called testosterone. Testosterone is responsible for many of the changes that take place in your body during puberty. I'll be speaking and just, uh, just suddenly go, which is quite embarrassing. Hanging hairs under my armpits, like I feel, I feel that I am getting more mature and... I started getting some hairs on my chest, like, and that, that makes me feel a lot older than what I am because not a lot of, even men, have hair on their chest. Suddenly, there's a lot going on in your body. One of the first things you'll notice changing is your genitals, the scrotum, testicles and penis becoming larger. Pubic hair begins to grow around the base of your penis. Your vocal cords are growing too, and that causes your voice to break and then deepen. You may suddenly gain weight and height, growing several centimetres in under a year. It's called a growth spurt. And for a while, you may feel completely uncoordinated, all arms and legs. Hair will grow under your arms and on your legs, then on your face and possibly your chest. Generally, you'll become more muscular and your chest and shoulders will get broader. All the parts of my body are just getting larger slowly and... Um, you get more worried about your physical appearance as well. Like, when you were younger, you didn't think much that you had to look specially good for girls or whatever. But now you start worrying more about, oh, I don't know, maybe this shoulder is lower than the other, or you look specially good for girls. 
The main purpose of the male's sexual organ is to produce sperm. When a sperm cell joins with the female egg cell, the egg will be fertilized and a baby can develop in a woman's body. During puberty, the hormone testosterone enables the testicles to start producing sperm cells for the first time. When a male becomes sexually aroused, the blood vessels in the penis get larger and more blood enters the vessels. The tissue of the penis gets hard. This is an erection. When sperm leave the penis, they travel in a fluid called semen. This is called an ejaculation. Urine also comes out of the penis, but not at the same time as semen. I don't know if I look growing up or anything, but my friends, they, I think they look growing up. Uh, our actions, I just, I just kind of sit down or do that or put my hands in my pocket or something like that. <laughs> I haven't had a wet dream. And I don't know, my friends like to say things like, have you had a wet dream yet? And then I know an older kid who said, oh, you'll have one soon and all this. I haven't had one yet. Nocturnal emissions are better known as wet dreams. When you're going through puberty, you can ejaculate in your sleep without realising. It may seem rather embarrassing, but it's quite normal and nothing to worry about. When you're going through puberty, you might well have an involuntary erection. It could even be in class. It's not as noticeable as you think, and it happens to all young men. As for the size of your penis, well, they come in all sizes. A bigger penis doesn't make you more of a man, and a smaller one doesn't make you less manly. You just need to remember that, like you, your friends are going through the same changes too. Your dad, older brother and male teachers have all had to grow up just like you. So don't be afraid to talk to them and ask questions. If you want to find out more about some of the things we've discussed in this video, there's a booklet which comes with this program and you might find it useful to read.